So welcome to the Thursday Drivers Press Conference from Sepang in Malaysia. And we welcome Valtteri Bottas from Williams, Kamui Kobayashi from Catrum, Danny Kifiat from Toro Rosso, Pastor Maldonado from Lotus, Kimi Raikkonen from Ferrari, and Nico Rosberg from Mercedes. Valtteri, we'll start with you. Quite a race in Australia, 15th up to 6th, hit the wall, back down to 15th, back up to 6th again. Very eventful. But what do you think was possible that day? Yeah, really eventful. I mean, if we look at look at it as a whole race, we need to be happy, you know, with the result. Now we have more points than double the more points than last year, so it's a good good beginning for us. But yeah, could have been better. I think uh, we we could have definitely, without my mistake, uh, be fighting for the podium. So tell us a little bit about what these cars are like to drive. Obviously, less rear end stability, more of a handful into and out of the corners. How have you found it so far? Yeah, still, I mean, the cars have quite a bit less downforce than last year, so you're sliding a bit more and with more engine power also. It makes it a bit more bit more tricky, but, uh, I mean, I, I like it. I really think the cars are good fun to drive, and uh, I hope it looked good from outside. I think we made also exciting races with the new cars, new engines, so I think it's good. Okay, thank you for that. Coming to you, Daniel. Um, obviously, youngest ever point scorer with that result in Australia at the age of 19. How do you feel about that and the start you've made? Oh, well, it was a good race, also eventful for us. Uh, it was everything new for me, so so obviously many things to learn, uh, quite during the qualifying, during the race. So, yeah, it was good. In the end, P10 is an is okay result, but we always want some more. So in the end, we always would like to get some more points in the future, and... Uh, the more we get, the better it is. I wonder if you could talk a bit about the step up. I mean, pri prior to this, I guess the longest race you've ever done is, what, 35 or, or 40 minutes before you uh, raced in Australia. And then, of course, the challenge of this weekend in particular so soon. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, it was a very long race. But in the end, uh, I found a good rhythm and uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't looking so long anymore. So, so here it's going to be a bit different because it's much, much warmer. So let's see. Let's see how this challenge will be will be done. So it's hard to say for me now, but at the moment it's looking pretty hot. Uh, but it shouldn't be a big problem in the end. Okay, thank you for that. Coming to Kamui, welcome back to Formula One. How does it feel to be back? Hi. Uh, well, I think first of all I have to say I think great to be back in Formula One. I think after one break, doing like GT. Uh, I think definitely I enjoy in GT, but uh, you know I think Formula One is one of the top category. And always, I think, missing like development. Of course, I think driving, racing with uh, one of the top driver, I think, which is uh, more ex excitement time. So I think the, I think very happy to be back, yeah. Obviously, quite a tough opening weekend for you in Australia. What has the team learned, first of all, about what happened at the start, and also about the general problems that you suffered during the, week, the weekend, and how much have you been able to put right? Uh, I think first of all, I think uh, unfortunately, I think uh, 2014 fast crashes myself is not really good. <laughs> but uh, it was not my, my fault, I mean, which is coming from the system. Uh, I think uh, I can't avoid anything without the rear brake. I mean, that was the fast, proper brake. And uh, I mean, in that point, I feel really straight away, uh, I was like panic because uh, I felt like I was like a little bit crazy because my car it doesn't stop. I mean, when I look at the, the other car. And yeah, I think uh, I can't avoid. I feel really sorry to uh, Philippe. I mean, just I don't want to crash, of course, like that, and I don't want to end up like that. But uh, that's what happened in the racing accident. So uh, I think uh, we have to find uh, what is really problem. I mean, we we know the problem, but we have to find out. Uh, we never happen next time. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think through the week, I'd say. It was a very difficult week for us because we, we missed uh, the Friday, complete Friday, and we went to Q3. I think we did, a, well, I think a proper lap, but uh, unfortunately we have not much time to change any setting during the Q3 to uh, practice three to qualify. So, well, I think uh, I think we went to Q2, which is very happy, but I think uh, we had to look more potential at what we have. I mean, still. We didn't bring any potential for the car, so uh, I'm quite excited looking forward this week, and especially I think this week is our home race, so it's very important to having a great result. And uh, of course, I think uh, a lot of Malaysian fans are excited about Formula One, so uh, hopefully we can achieve something. Okay, thank you for that. Coming to you, Pastor, obviously like Kamui, it was a tough weekend for you in Australia, not too many laps uh, on the board. 
How much has the team been able to do in the time since then? I mean, uh, since the pre-season, it was quite, quite tough for us. And uh, we've been working very hard and trying to push to solve uh, all of the problems. These kind of problems are uh, when you get at the bottom of the problem, uh, you see that they are no huge problem, uh, easy to fix. But uh, it took so many times from from the test uh, in the first race uh, again. So I think uh, we miss uh, free practice, uh, even on Saturday, uh, quali. So we've been able to to do a proper long runs and to see our real potential of the car because of this kind of uh, issues we had. And now uh, I hope to have a better weekend. We've been working hard again uh, to try to improve. We improved quite a lot uh, for the race. We never been able to, to, to run uh, for more than 10 laps together. And uh, during the race, we did more than 30 laps with both cars, which is uh, a step forward. Now we are full focus on finish the race. And I think if we finish the race, we will be in a good position to, to, to fight for, for good places. From the running that you have done, what's the car telling you? What's it feel like? Are you optimistic about the potential of this car? It's very difficult to say, just because everything is is new, you know, for us. And uh, we will need some more time uh, in the car, especially to, to, to get a, a to explode the, the potential of the car, you know. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to say. Uh, the feeling is not bad, but uh, against the other teams, I think uh, we need some more time in the track and try to, to do our best to catch them. I think it's going to be a very tough uh, beginning of the season. But uh, again, uh, things are uh, changing quickly in Formula 1. So we've been working very hard. The team uh, is quite good on, on reacting. And uh, hopefully this race will be much better for us. OK, thank you for that. Coming to you, Kimmy. Seventh uh, in Australia, and a, a bulletin from the Ferrari team since then with some quotes from you saying that one of the problems was the brake-by-wire system in particular. Would you give us a bit more detail on that? Uh, I don't know where that came from. I mean, it's not the issue. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the system. Uh, somebody asked me after the race, and I said, it's not that, because they, they kind of said that it's, it's there's some issue, and it's not true. But uh, just mainly set up uh, to get the cars as I like it, uh, as I wanted to have it. And uh, I'm sure once we, we, are, we are making some, some, uh, some stuff for me, so hopefully once we get those, uh, it will uh, get a bit more easy to get a bit more feeling in the front end. So uh, but it will take a little, little while. But uh, I mean, obviously not the ideal start for the, for the year for, for the team, not what we what we want to achieve, uh, we want to much more better results, but uh, I mean, uh, after all the difficulties uh, over the weekend and uh, how, how somehow difficult it was uh, on many areas, just the small things, uh, I think at least we got something out and it's going to be a long year, so hopefully we, we can now just build on it and uh, we have plenty of good people and they're working flat out and as a group uh, to improve things, so we, we still have lot of things to do, uh, but uh, I'm sure we can we can uh, keep progressing. So obviously, as you say, some work to be done on the front end. But with this particular circuit, the nature of this circuit, do you think that you and we will be able to see more of what this Ferrari car is capable of this weekend, perhaps, than we did in Australia? Um, I don't know. I mean, every circuit is different, and obviously, it's very hot, humid here. Uh, there are slightly different tyres, I think, here. So. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, it's even from the past years, it was very difficult to say from race to race, and especially with this new uh, new year with new rules. So it'll be hard, but uh, hopefully we get a bit, a bit better feeling and overall have a bit more experience on all the things, how to run run the weekend through a little bit more cleanly and uh, hopefully get, uh, get a better results. Okay, thank you. Coming to you, Nico. Obviously, the winner in Australia, your fourth career win and what's the reaction been like what uh, what's the feedback been like how have you spent the last 10 days or so has it been more special than uh, the other wins well it's been a fantastic start to the season definitely yes um, I think the whole team has just done a great job uh, with these new regulations you know with the 
with the car and engine and, and uh, powertrain that they've built. Um, and yeah, it's been great to win the first race for sure. Uh, fantastic. Um, and now, but just you know, it just uh, it was it went on holiday after that. So obviously the holiday was a little bit better, <laughs> thanks to the win. But now back to uh, you know just fully focused on on getting the most out of this race. Obviously, it's well chronicled that it was an eventful race for you here last year, particularly towards the end. Do you expect it to be another tight, close in-house battle this weekend? That would be a great thing um, because that means, uh, well, the possible the chances are, yes, that uh, there will be to right at the front because at the moment it seems that we have a bit of an advantage over the other people. Of course, Melbourne is not is not a benchmark, you know, as a as a race, so we need to be a bit cautious with that. But but I think we're looking good, yeah, and so. Um, for sure, it will be possible to do a great result again here. OK, let's throw it open to the floor then. Can you just your name and your publication, please? Who's got the first question, please? Kate Walker, Crash.net. I have a question for all six of you gentlemen. We've heard quite a lot of um, negative headlines, negative news reports about the new formula. I'd like to get some positive feedback from you on what these new cars are like to drive and how fun they are to race. Well, Valtteri's already answered that to some extent, so let's uh, go to Daniel. Uh, well, it's quite popular to criticize Formula One nowadays, I think, and uh, there is always some new technologies coming, and uh, it happened for me to debut in a, in a new Formula One, let's say, and uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. I would say uh, this tendency with the new technologies is, uh, it has to change at some point, and, uh, and well, I think it's quite quite interesting. It's still fast. It's going to be faster all the time, and um, we see at the end of the of the year how much is it better or not. So it's early days. Kamu, you're coming back from a year outside of Formula One. These cars are quite lively to drive. Well, I think uh, I definitely I enjoy driving. Of course, I think in the beginning always not easy, um, but uh, you know I remember like. When they become like V10 to 8, even I think uh, it was quite similar headline. And uh, after a few, few years, or I think a few months, I think already everybody forgets. So I don't think it's, uh, it's a big problem. But I think for us, it's still we enjoy driving. And uh, for drivers, it's more challenging to drive. So I think uh, I'm pretty happy. Nico, you've got quite a few years' experience now. Where do these cars rank on the fun scale? I think it's been all good for F1. Um, it's changed the pecking order around, you know, which is uh, which is definitely good for everybody. Because the same guy winning last year, uh, we needed a bit of a change on that. <laughs> uh, so that's been good. Then the cars are great to drive, you know. There's uh, that, that's that's fine. Um, so I think it's all good. Obviously, Kimmy, you were saying before it's not quite suited to your particular style at the moment. But in general, are these kind of cars uh, fun to drive? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's awful different uh, as a driver to to compare the last year's cars to this one. Obviously, there's some small detail issues, but I think it's a bigger issue is that how big a difference for me is uh, just to be in a different team. Every, every team builds a bit different different cars, so it doesn't really change an awful lot uh, as a driver. And final word from you, Pastor. Is uh, you excited about these cars? Yeah, to be honest. Hello. To be honest, I don't have uh, much, much to say, you know, because I've been no, 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 a lot of time in the car at the moment. It's quite early, but uh, yeah, it's feeling not that different to what we had in the past. For sure, it's a very complicated car, especially for, for the technicians, for, for the engineers uh, in the paddock. Uh, for us, uh, it's a bit more busy uh, on the steering wheel. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit more complicated, but uh, it's what we have. At the moment, it's the same for everyone, so, okay. Okay, great, thank you for that. Who's got the next question, please? Who's your name and your publication, please? Emma Dreher, German press agency, DPA. Nico, with the win here, you can equalize the five wins of your father. What does that mean for you, and how confident are you in general to win here? Um, uh, yeah, I, I understand that it's... Uh, it's interesting to do the comparisons and and that and and even I find it interesting. You know, after after Australia, I read that uh, it was he also won the first time at the first Australian GP 29 years ago. So that's fun to read those things. But I really don't think about that. You know, I just I don't compare. I'm proud of what my father achieved, and then now I just uh, I'm just focused on my 
on my job and getting the most out of it. And, and definitely, yes, there's a, I'm optimistic for the weekend and uh, there's a possibility to win. Okay, next question, please. Name and publication, please. Adrian Rodriguez, uh, Agencia F from Spain. A question for Kimi. Uh, Kimi, uh, how has your relationship to Fernando Alonso developed, if it has, uh, in any direction, since you guys are teammates? Um, well, I mean, it's good. It's always been good. And uh, obviously, it's only early days. So, uh, and, uh, I mean, there was a lot of talk in the media from you guys. Different people saying different things, but I mean it's been good, and uh, the aim is to try to improve things, things, and uh, uh, get uh, get the team where we want to be. Okay, who's got the next one, please? Name publication, please. Uh, <coughs> hey, Kiko, the Turun Sanomat. Kimi, did you have any temptation to go to drive the simulator to get better settings for you? No. Okay, it's pretty clear. <laughs> Who's got the next one, please? <coughs> no more. Anybody else ah. got a question? Yeah. yeah. Flavio Onetti, Corriere Sera, again to Kimi. Can we say a Ferrari here more uh, able to attack uh, Mercedes and the other teams? Uh, I mean, like I said before, uh, we don't know how it's going to be here. Uh, obviously, it's a different, different circuit. It will be very hard for the for the cars, uh, the heat, uh, and um, I mean, we have to wait and see how how we can do. Obviously, we learn learn uh, quite a bit on 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 things from the last race, but then it's the same for every team, and uh, um, hopefully, we can be a bit more. Uh, happier overall and then see where we end up. Okay, next one please. Abhishek Takle from uh, Midday. Uh, question to all six drivers. Uh, now that the first race is out of the way, do you uh, have a fair idea of you know who stands where uh, in the pecking order? Or you know, given that Albert Park is a unique circuit, is it still very much a step into the unknown? Yeah. Okay, Valtteri, would you like to start? Thank you. I think we, we have some kind of idea, you know, where, where every team is. Of course, like Nico said before, that Melbourne is not maybe the best benchmark. It's a little bit different track than most of the others. So, yeah, we, we'll see here. And, of course, all the teams are going to improve so much race by race, especially when we come to Europe. So, yeah, some kind of idea, but it can change. So where do you think you are then? Second, third, fastest car? Um, somewhere, somewhere there, hopefully. I mean, uh, it's been a good start for us. Hopefully we can maintain because everyone is going to improve a lot. So d definitely I, w I would see no reason why we couldn't find four top six positions. Kimi, where's Ferrari? Um, I think we are more or less where we finished. Pretty clear where Mercedes are. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we look to be the quickest at the moment, which is, uh, which is fantastic. But Again, we need to be careful with that. And the opposition is, is not asleep, you know, they're pushing like crazy. And Daniel, you got two cars into the top 10 in qualifying and the race, Toro Rosso, uh, in Australia, which they didn't do the whole of last year. So where does that put you at the moment in the pecking order? Well, I hope in the points quite consistently, it's, uh, it would be good for us. And um, if then we can use the conditions to our best, hopefully we can, we can go as high as possible. It's always what we're fighting for. And uh, the higher, the better. And Pasta? Hard to say? We don't know. Come away. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, no worries. Right, who's got the next one? Is that it? No, I think that's the end of it. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time this afternoon. Good luck this uh, weekend. A transcript of this press conference will be available at www.fia.com tomorrow. Team Principals Press Conference at the same time. Thank you. <laughs>